this is the moment you've been waiting for. So let's make some history. It is my great pleasure to announce that the 2023 Heisman Trophy winner is Jaden Daniels from Louisiana State University. Congratulations. This, uh, before we hear from you, this is yours. Give it a test drive. 25 pounds. You got it. <laughs> Hello and welcome into Tiger's Roar. I am Jonathan Poche, joined by the Bud Man, Buddy Sanji, here at Old School Barbecue. We tape here on December 20th, a Wednesday, so let us be one of the first to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. Welcome into Bud Man, really early. You saw in the intro, Bud Man, Jaden Daniels gets the Heisman. That's LSU's second Heisman in five years. Of course, Joe Burrow, 2019. Now Jaden Daniels in 2023, two quarterbacks. But man, this has to build some momentum and showing these transfer players, these, these young players looking at LSU, hey, this is a spot that I can go play quarterback and truly succeed at the maximum level. Happy holidays, everybody, and Merry Christmas to all of you. Listen, if you are a procrastinating shopper like yours truly, we've got plenty of time. You've got Friday. You've got Saturday. Oh, by the way, Christmas Eve on a Sunday could have some rain coming in. Christmas Day on Monday. And it is a little bit of an early Christmas for you Tiger fans as we're looking at about 25 signees that have all inked with LSU. It is National Signing Day. Live today from Old School Barbecue. And, of course, uh, we hope uh, all of you are uh, feeling good and, and getting in the Christmas spirit. Uh, I do have some bad news to deliver to you right out of the gate. I was wrong. Now, I was dead wrong. I thought we'd be sleeping in a new house last uh, next year. And uh, we have confirmed that LSU defensive coordinator Matt House is, in fact, coming back. You like him a lot more than I do. I don't like the scheme. I don't like uh, what they did on, on defense this year. They are bringing in a blockbuster D-line coach, which will be named at the appropriate time, and maybe some other coaches. But uh, I think uh, when you give a guy uh, a two-year extension, 2.0 uh, next year, 2.1 for 2025, it's hard to kick him to the curb. I just hope, J.P., the defensive philosophy changes. I want to see more aggression. I want to see more scheming, disguising, blitzing, stunning. Let them do what they want to do. Yeah. Play like a batter out of hell and play uh, fast. And, of course, uh, as most of you know, Jaden is going to make the trip with the team to Tampa. But just about everybody yep. else playing in the bowl game. So i uh, not telling you to bet on the Tigers, but it wouldn't shock me to see LSU put a, a kick in to Wisconsin. And that's coming up here in less than two weeks, my friend. That's right. The Rely Quest Bowl, uh, Tampa Bay, uh, where they play their home games at uh, Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Uh, 11 o'clock kickoff, so you have two options. You can pinch it off early on New Year's Eve and get to bed so you can wake up and watch the Tigers, or just keep that party rolling all night. If you don't, if you don't have kids, that is. Uh, we need to wake you up early in the morning, but it's going to be 11 o'clock kickoff. Uh, we do have a little piece from Coach Brian Kelly and Coach Luke Fickle later on in this program. They talk about the Rely Quest Bowl, uh, how it was a preferred destination for their teams. They wanted to go to Tampa, of course, Wisconsin. Very cold this time of year, so Coach Fickle wanted his group and their fans to be able to come to Tampa. It's a beautiful stadium, obviously NFL caliber. Uh, Tampa Bay, Florida, LSU is used to playing in Florida uh, for bowl games, certainly. Uh, so... Brian Kelly had extra practices. Now, of course, you get Garrett Nussmeyer taking over the reins officially uh, from Jaden Daniels, and he'll be the quarterback for the Tigers in this bowl game. About nine Tigers have got into the trans uh, transfer portal. Of course, Sage Ryan uh, got in there, and they talked him back in here, and um, uh, we'll, we'll see what they can put together. But, uh, oh, by the way, since we last uh, talked, 
uh, the schedule was released and LSU with a blockbuster schedule. USC and UCLA in the same year, JP. They will be in the Big Ten next year. And uh, as uh, most people know, uh, uh, the SEC with 16 teams with the addition of Texas and Oklahoma. Yep. Man, is it going to get fun. Your football schedule next year, if you've got season tickets, this is the one year you want to definitely uh, re-up and get them because yep. uh, Alabama, Oklahoma, UCLA, and, uh, of course, Ole Miss, who is killing it in the portal. Um, it's going to be a very tough schedule. But, yep. uh, look, uh, we hope that uh, all of you have enjoyed the year, and as we look back at the year, Pretty darn good, JP, when you talk about natties for Coach Kim Mulkey and the women's basketball team and Jay Johnson yeah. and the men's baseball yeah, team. Yeah, top of the national championships and cap it off with that Heisman Trophy. We'll let you guys hear the entire Heisman Trophy acceptance speech from Jay Daniels in the next segment. We'll take a quick break here on Tiger Shore. Come back and watch us. We're right here on Tele Pelican Sports TV. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Visit Treads and Care Tire Company's new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for over 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair and top-notch customer service. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. Right now, during the season of inspiration at Team Mazda, get 1.9% financing for 60 months on a new Mazda CX-5. Or get 0.9% financing on the all-new 24 Mazda CX-90. Save thousands on over 150 new Mazdas now on sale at Team Mazda. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having Manda in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats. The flavor says it all. Here on Tigers Roar, John the Poche and the Bud Man Buddy Signs. If you missed the first segment of this show, check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash Pelican Broadcasting. You see it right there on the graphic on the screen. It's time to talk some LSU football, some Heisman Trophy. Jaden Daniels takes home the hardware, LSU's second Heisman Trophy in two years. Had a great season for the Tigers, Bud Man. We'll talk about passing first. 236 out of 327. That's a 72.2 passer completion rating. For 3,812 yards and 40 touchdowns. 
and threw the, uh, on the ground 135 carries for 1,134 yards and 10 touchdowns. Bud, man, we didn't think we'd see a quarterback performance like Joe Burrow did in 2019, and yet Joe Burrow had 50-plus touchdowns, beat seven of the top 10 teams, uh, ran undefeated through the national championship, but uh, Jaden Daniels, certainly a very special talent. LSU, lucky to land that transfer out of Arizona State. Did not win the vote in the West, did not win the vote in the Midwest, but uh, every everywhere else uh, took care of it. Thought it was a, a Class C ceremony. 40 touchdown passes. Last year he had 17. Only four INTs. Last year he had three. 100, uh, I'm sorry, 1,134 yards, 10 rushing touchdowns, one fumble, um, and that was on the targeting yep. by the Ole Miss fans. Tigers, if you want a New Year's resolution, hey, can the SEC fix targeting? It was a mess this year with that targeting call. As everybody knows, Alabama, the law firm of Saban, Sexton, and and uh, Sankey got it done, and they'll be playing Michigan, of course, in New Orleans, Texas, and Washington. Here's J.D. That's one of his Heisman moments right here. What an incredible run. And uh, didn't get in, but he got in later, uh, J.P. Yeah, certainly had a few Heisman moments uh, against this Florida team. It was a turning point in LSU season, uh, fourth and four, and there was no hesitation. Uh, Jay Nails takes it all the way down, uh, close to the end zone. Here's a great run right here for a touchdown, the longest Rushing touchdown by any SEC player this season. Jane Daniels long uh, of 85 on the season. A great run. Uh, we saw that all season, bud, man. Can hurt you with his legs, but so improved with that deep ball. You read the, the, the scouting reports on Jane Daniels coming into the draft, and that's the, the, the high point about this kid. Uh, here's the fourth and oh, – no, this is second and ten. Another great scramble right here. Uh, just showing you we can do inside the pocket and hurt you with his legs. 606 yards accrued in this game. I know everybody in town wanted to give him the Heisman after this. I cautioned and said two more games. The fact that Bo Nix stuck it up against uh, Washington in their conference championship certainly helped them. And once again, here's uh, a, a nice uh, Josh Williams, you can just tell. A super kid. There's a good probability he may come back next year, JP. Uh, but, man, you see the, the, the success that Jane Daniels was able to have, and you know, not only as a, as a transfer quarterback, but uh, his ability to develop and improve in the, in the purple and gold. Uh, you mentioned the statistics last year. And Here's so that run right there, man. Zigzagging like uh, like you do interstate traffic getting man. home to your house. That's right. So, uh, his ability to, to improve himself and really develop that deep ball, it really put himself – uh, at least in the top three quarterbacks in this draft and looking to go in the first round. And let's make sure that we give credit to both Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. Kyron Lacey. Kyron Lacey is coming back for 2024. Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. are playing in the bowl game. Yeah, but, man, we kind of expected Jay Nails not to play in the bowl game. Of course, uh, a huge future in front of him. Gets the Heisman Trophy. Going to start preparing for that combine. Some team is going to be really lucky in the first round to get a Jane Daniels. Not only uh, the athlete, but, but the person. I mean, so thoughtful, great leader, uh, not a big talker, but leads on the field by example. He's like the Jeffersons. He's moving up on the draft. There's Brian Thomas Jr., 15 touchdown receptions. I'm going to predict he has one or two more uh, in the bowl game. Uh, but, man, we, we, we love the highlights, love to see him, and you guys have probably already seen uh, the expect, acceptance speech uh, from the Heisman Trophy. Uh, but that's okay if you've already seen it. It's only about seven minutes long. Jane Daniels has given so much to this program at LSU, you can devote seven more minutes to his acceptance speech. Here's a very thoughtful Jane Daniels accepting the Heisman Trophy 2023. It is my great pleasure to announce that the 2023 Heisman Trophy winner is Jaden Daniels from Louisiana State University. Congratulations. This, uh, before we hear from you, this is yours. Give it a test drive. 25 pounds. You got it. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Um, this is a dream come true. I want to first give thanks to God, you know, for all the glory. He's my rock, my savior. Um, he blessed me with the talents and ability to get here, all the special people here to develop these skills. To Bo, Mike, and Marvin, you guys are amazing. I enjoy watching y'all, but the competition is never over. I look forward to seeing you guys on Sundays. I'd like to start the thing with a few thank, thank yous. I learned from previous winners, the first lesson is becoming a great quarterback. You gotta thank your old line first. Thank you guys for getting me here today in one piece. I know it wasn't easy. You know, I scramble around a lot, but you know, I love you guys. <laughs> I have so many coaches to thank. My high school coach, Nick Rogers, he is here. Um, thank you for believing a 14-year-old freshman uh, to start on varsity. I, I probably weighed 140 pounds. <laughs> I appreciate you. Taylor Kelly, thank you for helping me elevate my game, taking me to new heights and next level. I want to thank Herm Edwards, Marv Lewis, and Antonio Pierce. Thank you for your leadership and welcoming me when I was at ASU, and thank you for giving me the keys to the program. To Coach Kelly, Coach Frank, Coach Denbrock, and Coach Sloan, and the rest of LSU football staff, thank you for trusting in me to lead your team. I learned so much from you guys. You took a kid from the West Coast and brought me da back down to the bayou. I I'm forever thankful. I want to thank to every single LSU fan for having my back. I never seen fans pouring their hearts into a team like LSU. I really wish I could have brought you back another championship, but that was my plan. But you know, God has other plans for me. So wow. <laughs> I want to thank all my teammates from Arizona State to LSU. Uh, you're my brothers. You work so hard every day and inspire me to be my best. Uh, the truth is I will truly miss all you guys. Uh, having future NFL players on my team make my job look easy. Um, you know, my receivers always say this. You know, they're, always, they're like Waffle House. They're always open. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to acknowledge all the unsung heroes of this game. Trainers, the nutritionists, uh, equipment managers, groundkeeper, janitors, you know, security, everybody. Um, basically everyone who works behind the scenes to make sure our sport is the greatest on earth. I know it's sometimes a thankless job, so I want to say thank you. Then finally, I'd like to turn to my family. <laughs> Dad, you know, you, you put a football in my hands when I was young. Um, I know you raised me to be a corner, but hopefully now <laughs> the decision to play quarterback is <laughs> Paid off. You taught me how to play, lead, and be calm no matter the situation. And I know I wouldn't be on the stage if it wasn't for you, so thank you. I love you. My rock. <laughs> My mama. <laughs> you were so nervous when when I was playing my first high school game, you know, that you couldn't even watch my first high school touch. Now you close your eyes. Um, but after that, you never took your eyes off the field. You always had my best interest at heart from day one, and you showed me that tough love when I needed it. You instilled in me the hard work mentality that got me here, and you always, to, you always told me to keep my eyes on the pride. You encouraged me to always bet on myself because you always believed in me no matter what. I graduate in three years because that's something that you pushed me to do. Um, and here and now, I'm on this stage, and I, I love you, Mom. Thank you. I want to shout out um, one more person, Sherman Wilson. He, he's in the stand somewhere. Thank you for everything you've done for me, bro. Um, you know, pushing me no matter what. You might be annoying, but you know, I love you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Being a college athlete and winning this award has been a dream come true. I want to dedicate this award to every boy and girl who has a dream. Uh, where faith and hard work, you never know what's possible. They said I was too skinny, so I added weight. They said I relied on my legs a little bit too much. So, you know, I went to work, you know, completed all those passes, you know, had the season I had. So I thank everybody out there. And they said I was too quiet. So, you know, I became more vocal. I stepped out of my comfort zone. And now I'm here today. Um, so what did I learn from all this? I learned how to block out the noise, that you could overcome any obstacle, and just be humble, be legendary, and most importantly, you know, be joyful about what you do. And when you get knocked down, get back up, keep smiling, and never give up on your dreams. And I want to end a special thank you to Greg Brooks Jr. and his family. You gave me inspiration to continue on this journey of greatness and keep fighting. Thank you.
And that was LSU's Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Jaden Daniels' acceptance speech. Truly a very thoughtful speech in my opinion. Thanked all the staff, the equipment managers, the, the field workers, of course all the coaches since high school. But thank God first and thank Greg Books last. And I thought that was a, a very thoughtful speech, bud, man. And look, I love the line about uh, his receivers are like Waffle House, always open. Yeah. And so um, uh, I, I like the fact, uh, J JP, that uh, look – Logan is all these guys that have a chance to go pro and might go pro. Everybody playing in a bowl game. You can't blame Jaden Daniels for not playing. Yep. JP and I were talking about his draft status. Hey, if you're dreaming, they're not going to get picked by the Saints. Forget it. If you think Jaden Daniels is going to be a Saint, it better be by the way he lives and believes because he's not going to be picked by the Saints. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did you tell me they invested $60 million for a car? That sometimes doesn't work. Well, it drives for about 40 to 60 yards. Once it gets 20 yards to its destination, it, it breaks down. Hey, Derek Carr and the Saints, their best game of the year. Two games in a row, they've not given up a touchdown. Here's what I do, folks. After the season, I take all my defensive coaches at LSU and drive 60 miles and go ask the Saints, how are you so good on defense? Because if we see the same defense as we saw last year with LSU, Brian Kelly's going to find out just how ugly the LSU fan base can be. Well, we do tape here on a Wednesday, December 20th. It is National Signing Day, the early signing period. So we'll get into a whole bunch of that right after this break. You're watching Tigers Roar right here on Pelican Sports TV. Tremontis has meat. Tremontis has seafood. Tremontis has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontis.com. Celebrate this holiday season with the gift of a new Honda during Happy Honda Days at Team Honda. And now you can make no payments for 90 days on our biggest selection of Hondas this year, making this the happiest time of the year. Come save now at Louisiana's number one Honda dealer, Team Honda. Caught spiders. Premier Pest Services. Few things in life are as valuable as family and peace of mind, especially when it comes to your final arrangements. And that's where Lee Serio can help. His prepaid funeral plans make sure your life will be remembered exactly the way you want it to. With Lee Serio, no detail is too large or too small. Call Lee or his wife Gretchen at 225-315-6329. Let Lee Serio give you and your family the peace of mind you all deserve. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. The winning play is the Buy Here, Sell Here event at the Team Automotive Group. Buy here and save on hundreds of certified and pre-owned vehicles. Or sell here and we'll pay you top value. Buy here or sell here and you'll be the winner at every location of the Team Automotive Group. Treads and Care Tire Company announces its new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair with top-notch customer service. Treads and Care offers the convenience of shuttle service and pickup and delivery of your vehicle. You can also enjoy the comfortable customer area, complete with workstations, high-speed internet, and a complimentary coffee bar. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. Treads and Care, the tires you need and the service you want. As we tape here on December 20th, a Wednesday, National Signing Day, the early signing period, 2023. LSU has about 25 signees so far on the dotted line. Some positions of need to be certain. LSU has to improve that defensive secondary. Uh, good thing for Coach Brian Kelly is, Bud, man, a lot of the young guys that had to play this season, uh, that forced playing time only going to serve them well 
uh, moving forward. We'll get right to these signees, bud, man. Uh, starting with a freshman, uh, going to be a freshman out of Evangel uh, at defensive end in Gabriel Relaford, a guy that LSU picked up really late, but a lot of Tiger fans are certainly excited about. Was committed to Texas A&M for a long time. Of course, the Texas A&M uh, D-line coach uh, left and went to Syracuse when Mike Elko came in and took over the Aggies. Uh, Gabriel Relaford, uh, 6'3 and a half, 6'4, 252, comes from the edge. JP, you can't ever have enough great edge rushers. you got to get to the quarterback. We all know the quicker you make him toss it and throw it, the better your defense is going to be. Let's talk about a couple quarterbacks. First, a kid out of Mississippi and P.J. Uh, Woodland. What do you know about P.J. Woodland? P.J. Woodland is a guy that Ole Miss came on uh, late. He was committed to Mississippi State. Once again, a, a, a smaller corner, but they like his cover skills. And, of course, LSU had a couple of highly rated uh, corners uh, and Andre Evans and Kai Bates that were committed, and they went to, respectively to Georgia and Florida State. Uh, this is an excellent insurance policy. Oh, yeah. by the way, Sage Ryan, Javian Toviano, Stamps, Hughes, all those guys will be playing some corner in the bowl game. Another quarterback, six foot out of John F. Kennedy High School in New Orleans, uh, Bernard Causey the third, bud, man. Pretty Don't good know size much about him, but I did hear he's a good cor cover corner. Look, you, you like the big corners, but uh, uh, Jawan Johnson and Sean Washington are the only two that have not signed to the 27. And uh, we'll give you some news about the D-line prospect. But uh, you saw the cornerback room. Uh, uh, nobody can predict uh, if Deuce Chestnut and uh, Denver Harris are going to be back. But most people don't think they, they are. You missed on those two in the portal last year. It's good to have these guys because you got yeah. five years to, to get them bigger, stronger, and better. Yeah, sign some big uglies up front. Offensive tackle Ethan Calloway, 6'7", 325. But, man, huge man. Yeah, Brad Davis is just killing it at uh, – uh, at his position, he continues to do a great job. Callaway is one of those guys, as we alluded to. Uh, you can't have enough big uglies. I really believe in 2024, you're going to be too deep across the board, and they're going to be happy with that. A couple more guys. Weston Davis, offensive tackle, 6'6", 282. And Ori Williams, 6'8", 297, bud, man. That's some big size. Weston Davis was a five-star. They flipped him from Texas A&M. Holy cow, you start talking about Will Campbell. You talk about Emory Jones. You talk about Lance Hurd. And now you're bringing in these big uglies. Brian Kelly and that offensive line are going to be hell to, to deal with in the coming years. Caden Durham, a, a guy that had an outstanding three touchdowns in, in his high school state championship. Uh, going to be the running back. He's listed at 5'9", 195. Uh, certainly exciting to watch. Lots of speed to burn. Boy, I tell you what, it's hard to make a comparison about these running backs because you don't know the caliber of competition. But Caden Durham is a home run at running back. You know Trey Bradford and Armani got, Goodwin got into the portal. You know that uh, Noah Kane uh, is uh, done. You know John Emery's done. And uh, Logan Diggs, what do you think? He's going to play in the bowl game. He finally looks healthy. I'd love to see him come back. My gut feeling tells me he's probably going to go. I would like to see him come back, but man, put out some great tape. Uh, certainly was a, a stabilizing force in, in that running back room. A guy that never lost a single yard. Uh, neg ne net <laughs> never netted a negative yard the entire season. Outstanding. Always moving forward. Very strong base. Uh, did see him come along. Uh, later in that season for the Tigers. So I would love to see him come back, but, man, I think he did put enough on tape, though, to give himself something to show these NFL scouts. Caden Durham is going to have an opportunity to play. Of course, don't forget about Trey Holly, Caleb Jackson, those guys at Redshirt. Uh, Holly Redshirt this year, Jackson played. So LSU with running back, as always, uh, will be plenty deep at that position next year. Uh, certainly an si exciting offensive new weapon that the LSU was able to uh, take down. And a huge tight end slash wide receiver out of Zachary and Trey Des Green, listed at 6'7", 226, uh, originally from Jackson, Louisiana. Uh, but, man, what he puts on tape, a freak athlete can go up and high point the ball. It's always a mismatch, especially in high school. He was making uh, these cornerbacks and safeties look like children playing against him. Uh, certainly a great athlete. Do you expect him to play more tight end or more out in the slot at wide receiver? Not throwing any shade uh, against Coach uh, Brew and, and his offensive coordinator. I was disappointed. They were down late, and they did not do a good enough job of getting him the football in crunch time. Obviously, he was frustrated. Look, folks, Kamori and Pimpton, where's number 88? You might see him in the bowl game. He's 6'6", about 245, and this kid – 
This is a beautiful thing, JP. They can run. They put the weight on. They're going to be able to block. But LSU is going to have some mismatches in the slot, in space, when you throw it out to these guys, 6'7", 240, and they can run. Don't forget about Mac Markway, who comes back, as well as Mason Taylor's got to get well. That wasn't 100% Mason Taylor we saw in 2023. Now, you will see Nussmeyer take over the reins from Jay Nails for this upcoming ReliQuest Bowl on New Year's. Of course, Ricky Collins is still in the quarterback room, but LSU does sign a freshman in Colin Hurley, 6'1", 217, out of Trinity Christian Academy in Jacksonville, Florida. Great things being said about this kid. Hurley. Unbelievable maturity. This guy is uh, just going to be 17 when he gets to the LSU campus. And uh, uh, Preston had the show with him last night on Tiger Bait. You can check that out. But yep. very, very mature. And also in the transfer portal, uh, they took A.J. Swan from Vanderbilt. Now, A.J. Swan has played a couple years. You had to get a, a quarterback that would come in and yep. not ruffle Nuss's feathers, yep. but give him some competition. 2,700 yards uh, and, and 15 touchdowns. Had a few interceptions. Can't run out of, um, out of sight, but uh, you got Ricky Collins and, 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 of course, Colin Hurley. So LSU will go into the 24 season with four quarterbacks on the depth chart now there will be more names to sign on that dotted line uh, later on in this uh later on in this year and then also moving into the early part of next season so we'll talk about them uh the transfers that come in out the portal and a whole lot more here on tigers sure. don't forget check us out on youtube at youtube.com slash pelican broadcasting it's a great way to keep up with everything we do here at the pelican all the shows we put uh, on the Pelican or on our YouTube page archive for your viewing pleasure. So go check it out while you're at the page. Click the like, the notification, and the subscribe button if you haven't done so already so you get notified every time we post something new right there on YouTube.com slash Pelican Broadcasting. Another quick break. We'll come back with a whole lot more here on Tiger's Roar. You're watching Pelican Sports TV. the feeling you can't smell it but you can almost taste it and whether it's for a family get together or a game day feast having red in the mix always sounds good for three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage Manda Fine Meats. The flavor says it all. Now's the best time to experience Mazda during the season of inspiration at Team Mazda. For a limited time, make no payments for 90 days on your new Mazda. That's right. Shop now, choose your new Mazda, and make no payments for 90 days at Baton Rouge's Mazda dealer, Team Mazda. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. Your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. And we continue here on Tigers Roar, talking some LSU football as we tape here on December 20th. National Signing Day, the early signing period. 
And Buddy Sanji has a few more of these signees he wants to go over with you. Some big-time players heading to Baton Rouge to put on that purple and gold for the Tigers. Yeah, Jelani Watkins is a really, really good wide receiver that can uh, do great things after he catches the football. Uh, Colin Billiot is also another wide receiver. Devon Key is a big-time linebacker. As we said, five-star Weston Davis, he is a great one. Ori Williams, we mentioned him, uh, big, big man. And, uh, of course, uh, the, a couple other guys. Xavier Adams is an outstanding linebacker, four-star, can Atkins. really, really run and tackle in space. And Deshaun McBride, this guy is a head hunter. We talked about it all year long. LSU has got to go from being a finesse defensive unit yeah. to being physical. And Scarborough just sent me a text and, and uh, says uh, he just went to Burger King and there was no beef to be had. Where's the beef? He's worried about D lineman, but I got a little bird in my ear. Are you ready? Makai Wingo is going to tell everybody what he's doing on January 2nd, the day after the bowl game. Yep. I think he's coming back. I think so, too. Mason Smith. I know he stands up and plays tall and he's easily blocked, but he's got to come back. Yep. Nobody's going to draft him. Yep. And then Savion Jones, who got up to 280, probably needs to get to 270. Uh, and that we're not even talking about Thanksgiving weight and Christmas weight that we've all put on. Right. But if you get those guys back, but they do have to, and I think once they get this blockbuster lead line coach, they're going to bring in some more D linemen. But you know it, folks, on all three levels. you got to improve your front four and your uh, point of attack with uh, sacks. Yep. Guess how many sacks they had this year? Mm. 26. They gave up 22. you got to get three or four sacks a game if you're going to be with the big boys. Linebackers, I guess the big question I have, what are you going to do with Harold Perkins? Right. And uh, – and then, obviously, that secondary, some physicality, some INTs, and some forced fumbles. So, Brian Kelly knows going into 2024, blockbuster schedule, everybody expecting to be in the CFP Final 12. I don't think it's going to be that easy next year, folks. So, January 1, 2024, will be the ReliaQuest Bowl in Tampa, Florida. Uh, 11 o'clock kickoff, number 13 in the final CFP poll, LSU. Uh, versus a big team, uh, Big Ten team in Wisconsin. Coach Luke Fickle, uh, very familiar uh, head coach, very uh, uh, comparable, very competent, uh, has a great program. Uh, Short a little bit this year, but looking forward to this opportunity to measure himself and his program against LSU, uh, one of the top programs, uh, not only SEC, but in, in, the, in the country. I had a buddy of mine text me uh, when the bowl matches were there. He said, uh, look, I've got some relatives in Tampa. We're going to go to the game. We call it bourbon and Cheerios, but he's calling this one whiskey and Cheerios. LSU play in Wisconsin, uh, known as whiskey. And uh, he says, look, Bloody Mary's in, and they're going to teach the Tampa people how to start uh, partying. 11 o'clock kickoff, I guess, JP, he'll start drinking and partying about 9 o'clock. So if you're over in Tampa Bay, I don't expect more than a couple thousand people following the Tigers, do you? No, a few thousand. That sounds about right. But I haven't it, seen whiskey tough. all year. Have you? I have not. No, I have not. They're so seven I, and five. Yeah, and, five and four in the Big Ten. And, and obviously, Brian Kelly's got to get the better bowl game. But the other thing in 2024, he's got to win that opening game. He's 0 for 2 in opening games. So we'll let you guys hear from head coach of Wisconsin, Luke Fickle, and the head coach of the LSU Tigers, Brian Kelly. Here they're talking about the Rely Quest Bowl, how Tampa Bay is a preferred destination, how his team or their teams are looking forward to this contest. It's an incredible opportunity. I think the, the uniqueness of college football today, um, you know, everybody looks to be one of those four teams, but the reality is there's a lot uh, still to be done. And for us and our program and where we need to go and what we need to do, this is an incredible opportunity. This is an incredible measuring stick based on our opponent um, to see just how far we've come from week one to where we are now. Speaking of your opponent, they've got a great offense. You know, how are you going to try to tackle that? Well, I don't know that you can stop them. We've got to find a way to contain them. And uh, their offensive coordinator, obviously, and I have go back. We, we've got a little bit of history for five years playing, uh, coaching together. Um, but I think they've got a uniqueness of they've got really, really good players. They do a great job of getting their players the ball, uh, playing in space. Uh, it's going to be a unique challenge for us. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do. Um, you know, so it's uh, 
It's not here just yet, so we've still got some time, but it's going to be a very unique challenge for us. I don't think it's something we've seen uh, our entire season. How did your uh, players react? We weren't together, so the old days of, of being together on, on, on Sunday when all the bold and things are announced, uh, because of recruiting, because you're on the road, you don't get a chance to be with those guys, but you knew. You, you knew the, you know, even after the last game, you started to hear those guys talking about the opportunity to, to go to Florida, the opportunity to be at Tampa possibly. Uh, I know that that's what they were really pulling for. And how do you think the fans are going to do that? You're going to have a lot of people traveling down. Well, this would be, I, I was at the bowl game last year, obviously. Um, but I think for us in particular, our fans, this is what they want. This is the traditions of January 1, having the opportunity to play an SEC team, maybe to get out of Madison and Wisconsin. It's a little bit chillier nowadays, so it gives them a little bit more of a reason, not only just to come watch their Badgers play, but also to come down and spend a few days in sunny Tampa. Yeah, this was a, a preferred destination for our football team. You know, certainly, you know, when we won our last game, we felt like this was, um, you know, going to be the place that we wanted. Um, we were pulling for it. Uh, I know our athletic director, Scott Woodward, uh, wanted to be here. Um, so we're excited about uh, getting the opportunity to play here and then play a, a Big Ten opponent in Wisconsin. So I think it's a great matchup. And, it, and it's on New Year's. And so all players all over the country, when they think about, you know, playing, they, they, they think about New Year's Day. And so it's, it's pretty exciting. Talk a little bit about New Year's Day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when you go into the season, you're thinking about the playoffs or New Year's Day. Those are the two things that kind of come to mind. And, you know, now that the playoffs are on New Year's Day, um, you know, we kind of open up the day. Uh, and this will be the first game out of the out of the shoot. And we'll kind of, I think, set the standard for what football is going to be for that day. And um, I know our guys are excited when it, when it pops up as a New Year's Day game. Um, I think they just feel like they're part of the pageantry in postseason. Yeah. yeah, I'm optimistic. You know, we had a workout yesterday. We had uh, our entire team there. So, you know, there's going to be some guys that, you know, certainly decide not to play or transfer. That happens in every program. But this is going to be a team that's well represented with its stars. Uh, they want to play in this game. They want to be part of it. Um, some will have other decisions to make. But, um, you know, this will be a football team that's focused to play this game and is excited to play. Oh, absolutely. I think both teams, you know, it's a it's a destination. You know, Tampa St. Pete is a place that you want to come to. I mean, you know, the golf, the, certainly there's so many things to do here in terms of attractions and amusements and fishing and certainly uh, the restaurants. It's, it's, it's a great, great place. And the weather's pretty good, too. So I think we're going to have a lot of people flocking here. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And that were the head coaches of the respective teams for the ReliQuest Bowl 2024. Of course, 11 o'clock kickoff, Tampa Bay, Raymond James Stadium. Both teams looking forward to that, bud, man. Uh, before we go to break, I want to talk a few minutes about Garrett Nussmeyer taking over the reins finally from Jay Daniels. Will be his first start as an LSU Tiger. He's been here a long time, feels like forever, uh, but this will be his first start. Officially, his program did bring in a quarterback to kind of uh, compete against him in this coming offseason, but uh, it's Garrett Nussmeyer's team, bud, man. What do you expect from him on offense? It's a shame the NCAA did not change the rule three years ago. If, if you remember, Nuss couldn't play in the bowl game against Kansas State because if he had, he would have lost his redshirt year. They changed that rule so everybody that's played four games can still play. Here's Nush. You see the footwork. We know he's got the big arm. JP, you're not going to have the quarterback draws. You're not going to have the scrambles. He's got a little bit of, uh, of leg uh, potential, uh, but, but not what you would call a dual threat quarterback. I can't wait to see him chunking down the field with all those bevy of wide receivers. And yeah. let's hope that uh, you utilize the tight end a little bit more. Yeah, that's a great point, but man. The offense will look different. There won't be as many quarterbacks runs, but one one thing will remain the same for LSU's offense, and that will be the long ball. Now, Smyer will air it out. The receivers will go get it. Uh, still going to expect the offense still to move the football and score some points. Hey, I'll ask you the question: Does Malik Neighbors get the get the uh, uh, record and and then uh, shut it down, or does he play a quarter or a half? And you know what? I, I look. 
part of me says he's going to get the record and go to the house, but part of me says, you know how com competitors are. He's going to want to want to be there with his uh, with his uh, teammates. So yeah. look for LSU. I set the over and under passing yards against Whiskey at 304. What do you think? That's a good number, but man, I like it right around 300. I think uh, Malik Neighbors does get the record and then does shut it down. Uh, is going to move on uh, to bigger and brighter things. But wants to secure that record. I think it uh, really speaks to that young man's integrity and, and what he wants to bring to his legacy uh, at, at LSU, but man. Yep. Another quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll have LSU's 2024 football schedule. Let's talk a little bit about the New Orleans Saints. Come back and join us right here on Pelican Sports TV. Sometimes life is wonderful, and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private health care is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now. You could the time to save on your new pilot is right now during Happy Honda Days at Team Honda. Celebrate huge savings on the largest SUV in Honda's history with our biggest selection of pilots this year. Shop Happy Honda Days and save at Louisiana's number one Honda dealer, Team Honda on Seagan Lane. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having Randa in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats, the flavor says it all. And we continue here on our final segment of this edition of Tiger's Roar. We tape on December the 20th. I want to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. Want to get into the 2024 season, look at LSU's schedule. We do have a graphic for you guys, so we'll actually start to go ahead and uh, pull up that graphic, and we'll talk about it, bud, man. Well, there we go. There it is. 2024 schedule, bud, man. You see us starting off with a bang in Vegas. Going to take on USC and Lincoln Riley as the head coach. McElroy, of course, when they uh, released the schedule with the SEC Network, he, he promoted this. It was going to be a great game. And uh, we'll have other shows to talk about where LSU will be preseason ranked last uh, next year. But McElroy said in this game, defense is optional. <laughs> Uh, both teams have struggled on defense. Lane uh, Kiffin, we know, is, is, is waiting for Bear. But Lincoln Riley is even worse than Kiffin with defense. 
you got to expect both teams scoring over 30 in that game. I like week two, Bud, man. In state, uh, going, you're going to take on Nichols at Tiger Stadium. Coach Tim Rebo and those Nichols Colonels. You hope that this is going to be, uh, you know, a game on the SEC network or something at 630. But uh, LSU, a prohibitive favorite in this game. Point spread will be, what, 38 to 40. Yeah, then you go South Carolina for the first SEC game. Then you take on UCLA at home. Chip Kelly, Bud, man, what do you know about the Bruins? Chip Kelly's been under fire. He lost his quarterback, Dante Moore, to Oregon. And uh, just don't call him the sissy blue shirts before the game. And I think LSU will be. But how cool is that to be playing USC uh, yep. and UCLA? Oh, by the way, not pack anymore. Right. They're in the big. And uh, as we know, that uh, conference will have 18 teams in it next and year. September 28, take on South Alabama, who came off a very successful season. Then you take on Ole Miss. Hold on. Go ahead, bud, man. Open date. Open. You're correct. After South Carolina. You're correct. The reason I stopped you and bring that, there are two open dates this year. So you play five games and get an open date. I think that's beneficial getting ready for Ole Miss because they're going to be loaded for Bear next year. Yes, yeah, so it certainly picked up a lot of players uh, in the transfer portal. They're talking about seven or eight starters on defense. Jackson Dark back, their quarterback. Getting back so, the quarterback. Uh, Kiffin's got going to be a threat next year. Then oh, by get, the way, did they beat LSU this year? Ole Miss? Yeah. They did. Let me see. 49-40, to 40 and uh, defense gave up two more touchdowns. So then you go to Arkansas, then it's Texas A&M, bud, man, and then you have another open date, the second open date. Then you go Alabama at home. Time for some revenge for Coach Brian Kelly. Win another game at home against the Crimson Tide. Yeah, those uh, games against Arkansas and Texas A&M are back-to-back on the road. Sam Pittman, one of the nicest guys in the, uh, in the league, but who knows if they're going to be any good. Mike Elko, going to probably take him a couple years. Uh, he's already lost a lot of coaches and players, but yep. – He's a good football coach. And so, as always, you got an obligatory open date. And I guess I'll ask you this question in the Christmas spirit. Would that be another Christmas present to see if BK could beat Nick Saban again in Tiger Stadium? And, oh, by the way, is Nick Saban coming back exactly. if they win ring number eight for him? So let me move on. November 16th is at Gainesville, uh, taking on Florida Gators. Coach Billy Napier, hopefully he's still the head coach at that point. I think there'll be an interim coach by that time. I really think Billy Napier is going to get thrown on the side of the road without a cell phone, without a jack, without a flashlight. He's not going to make it at Florida, folks. If you got stock in the Florida Gator football team, you better sell it before the season starts. Then the last two games are at home, taking on a Vanderbilt team. who's going to have a new quarterback, bud, man, because we know uh, Swan came over to LSU and then – they will, LSU will face Oklahoma at home for their first matchup in the SEC. That's going to be a barn burner, bud, man. A lot of offense in that game. Brett Venables, the head coach. But uh, Oklahoma trying to build momentum to join the SEC. Going to be the last regular season game for LSU. It's going to be a statement game. LSU and Oklahoma now, it looks like that is going to be the rivalry game. Of course, Texas is playing Texas A&M. Auburn is playing Alabama. Uh, as we know, uh, the, a lot of uh, you thought it was Arkansas, then it was Texas A&M, now Oklahoma. Oklahoma, by the way, welcome to the SEC. Last two games on the schedule, Bama and at LSU. So a lot of exciting uh, opportunities for the Tigers in 2024. We'll talk a lot about it, more of those uh, here on Tigers Roar as the season continues uh, moving into next year. Uh, but, man, we do have a few minutes left here in Tigers Roar. We want to change gears a little bit. Talk some NFL. Talk some New Orleans Saints. Played their, probably their best game this past weekend. Uh, picking up a dub to go to 7-7, seven and seven, uh, sitting tied at first place in the NFC South with those Buccaneers at 7-7. Seven and seven. But, man, Derek Carr looked good. The defense sacked Tommy DeVito for the, the Giants seven times. Defense is flying all around. Demario Davis had a great game, but really the story was Derek Carr threw the ball well, had three touchdowns, and did not. Uh, give up a touchdown on defense. Here's one of those sacks, and look, when you have seven sacks, of course, there's a guy you have a, a find an appreciation with uh, uh, as he came over to the lemonade stand. <laughs> That's right. Demario Davis, certainly a generous tipper at the lemonade stand, but here's the completion. Nice. Ju uh, uh, Juwan Johnson had a great game, caught a touchdown, uh, but really uh, was effective all game long working those seams. Carr has a tendency to hold the ball a little bit too long, but he did get rid of it, had a nice uh, completion percentage, and once again, uh, they were a little bit more uh, effective in the red zone and still settled for some field goals. But look, 
you got to like the way the Saints are playing, especially on defense right now. Yeah, Derek Carr, 23 of 28 for 218 yards, three touchdowns. Usually his kind of statistics are kind of swapped a little bit. He has a lot of yards and no touchdowns, but only 218 with that three scores. Here's one, uh, Keith Kirkwood, his first touchdown in five years. Uh, nice to see him getting the into the end zone. No doubt about it. And, of course, uh, as we know, uh, when you start talking about the Saints, uh, here's, here, here's a nice one uh, getting in the end zone. And uh, uh, who was that? Uh, Johnson. Juwan Johnson. Oh, okay, Juwan Johnson again. And uh, look, uh, you can tell Carr, uh, Carr was feeling it uh, last weekend. Yeah, Johnson only had the two catches, but you saw them both on highlights because they were both great, outstanding catches. Here's one for the touchdown. Uh, Derek Carr, pretty good numbers, bud, man. Taysom Hill only had one pass. It was incomplete. Alvin Kamara on the ground, 16 carries, 66 yards. That's a 4.1 average. Here's his best run of the day. Didn't get in the end zone, but with the Saints uh, do get the win 24-6 to and build some momentum here moving towards the last three games of the regular season and uh, always uh, enjoy seeing the guys and here's Jimmy Graham once again uh, what's that third game in a row three he's games in a row now. that's yep. right the resurgence of Jimmy Graham he came back from Jimmy a little injury and certainly has been an improvement uh, in this red zone for, as a threat for Derek Carr but man we'll have to ask you with only three games remaining on the schedule Saints sitting at seven and seven tied uh, atop the NFC South can the Saints take care of business handle their own destiny and make the playoffs this season I would not bet on it but I would be excited if they did they've got uh, the Rams tomorrow night they've got a short week and so they'll travel travel all the way out to play the Rams uh, tomorrow night on Thursday night and then the Falcons in Tampa Bay Baker Mayfield's been playing better uh, if I had to go to Vegas I'd say they probably are not going to make it but I'd love to see them get in like to see the Saints win this game on Thursday against the Rams have to travel uh, to Tampa who you mentioned is playing good football at top uh, the NFC South don't see the Saints win the game. Said it on this program. I'm not going to take it back. I do not think the Saints are going to make the playoffs. I'm sticking with it. Don't believe in Derek Carr. Even though he did play better, still not worth the $60 million guaranteed the Saints are giving him. Got to find a better run game. Uh, Alvin Kamara did not start this ball game. There's been some frustration that seems to be airing between AK and the leadership, the coaching staff, the, the, the play calls, even Derek Carr. Uh, lots to figure out still in New Orleans, but of course the quarterback's not going anywhere. They already guaranteed him $100 million for two years, so it doesn't matter who the Saints draft this upcoming season. If it's going to be a quarterback, it would love to see some competition for Derek Carr, but number four is not going anywhere for the Saints. I, I said it once, I'll, I'll say it again. Do not believe the Saints make the playoffs. Blow it up, bud, man. Blow it up. Hey, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all of you. Next time you'll see us will be after the year. Of course, we're going to take off uh, next week, the day after Christmas. So we hope that uh, all of you have a happy, safe, and blessed Christmas. And we cannot thank you enough for following us on the TV, on the radio, on the Internet, wherever uh, we come to. Don't forget to check out all the shows and JP doing a great job. Thanks to Alan, uh, obviously Marty, uh, and uh, Bert, and Katie, and everybody are part of the team. And we hope that you and yours bring it in the right way we hand it off to you final comment yes yeah, certainly want to wish you guys a merry christmas and please don't forget the reason for the season there's a reason we get together with the ones we love and exchange gifts is to celebrate the birth of a savior his name is jesus christ and he was born to save us all don't forget that in this season it is christmas there's a lot of hustle and bustle i'm sure you've gotten all your christmas shopping done but don't forget about the reason for the season. He is our savior. We certainly appreciate him and all of you out there. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash Pelican Broadcasting. And that'll do it for 2023, this edition of Tiger's Rule. We'll carry us over to the next year. Check us out on YouTube. We certainly appreciate you watching right here on Tiger's Roar.